Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to take a trip uh, down memory lane uh, through the history of pop culture in 1989 by way of Mad Magazine. But first, I want to thank you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new vids are available and help mitigate the kayfabe effect for yourself, which is whenever we talk about certain comics, uh, sometimes they're out of print. Uh, the video goes to the people who are subscribed first, and they're the people who are running to Amazon and eBay, scooping up the comics that we talk about and making them prohibitively expensive to you by the end of the day, if they're even available at all. If you watch these videos uh, to the end, that uh, helps let uh, YouTube know that our videos are valuable content, ships the videos off to other comic book loving YouTube people who haven't uh, had a chance to see the video yet, helps grow the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, uh, which in turn helps us continue to uh, make these videos for you guys on a uh, daily basis. Uh, so Jimmy, got to give shouts to the great Alika Seki from Maui Comics, who uh, when we were there in Hawaii shooting video, he was like, dude, I got a, I got a collection of Mad Magazine. An entire collection. We shot a video. The lighting conditions weren't uh, so great. weren't able to like really salvage much of the video. But at the end of that vid, uh, I asked him, "Man, what do you? So what are you going to do, man? Like, you going to put this out? Like, we'll help. You know, maybe we'll put this video out when you're trying to like sell the collection or whatever." And he was like, "Do you want the collection?" I was like, uh, well, uh, "What do you want for it, man?" He's like, "How about how about uh, a page from X Men Grand Design?" I said, "That's a bet, man." So. Here in the compound, we have every issue of Mad Magazine from 1 to about 525 and a little bit spotty after that. But got every issue that mattered. And uh, one of the way I'm trying to figure out, like, like how do we, what do we do, man? Like, we got this embarrassment of riches in, in the archives right now. What do we do? Uh, I did some test sampling on the homies, man, over the past, like, month or so and pulled out, like, you know, certain runs of the comic that would have been from our era and simply just going through the covers with dudes was getting people excited. Uh, so we'll do a little of that. We'll crack open the content. I got some things flagged here, Jimmy, but we have every issue. I'm telling you, Ed, I'm so excited for this. 1989, I'm 12. <laughs> like, like this is, this is such in my wheelhouse. And I feel like our fans are going to love this. Like, like the guys who start out watching wizard magazine coverage with us, it's the same, you know, this is kind of the same era. We hear from a lot of people that are, that are about our age. And I mean, this is formative time period. Totally. So I'm expecting a, a range of emotions as we go through <laughs> this and uh, memories to flood in and out. This is going to be great. Yeah. So starting it off with 1989, uh, January, I saw Roger Rabbit in the drive-in uh, with with my folks when, when I was a kid, when it was brand new. I saw it in a the theater. There's definitely some weird thing happening in, in my mind because I don't associate all three of these flicks I don't together. Either. That was my first thing like, when I so saw earlier. this cover. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make. Red Room Trigger Warnings issue number one is on the stands today. In the first week of April comes Red Room Trigger Warnings issue number two. That's the pumpkins issue of Red Room. And of course, last year... Uh, saw Red Room, the anti-social network, the idea for Red Room. It's murder on the dark web for fun and profit. Every issue is completely self-contained, and it is a gory splat fest, to say the least. Uh, the rest of the the Ed Piscor bib bibliography that is currently in print, you have three volumes of oversized X-Men Grand Design, retelling the entire story of the X-Men saga up through the origins to Days of Future Past. Four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree documenting in a very linear fashion the history of hip hop and rap music and WYSIWYG Portrait of a Serial Hacker charting the life of a computer hacker from the earliest days of high technology up to uh, WikiLeaks. Out in stores now, Jim Ruggs, Hulk Grand Design Monster, the first half of uh, the, the Incredible Hulk lore out on the stands as we speak. Various flavors. The Peach Momoko is coming out soon. How's that work, Jim? April 14th. It'll be in stores everywhere. April 16th. 40, <laughs> 40 pages in issue documenting the history of the Incredible Hulk. There is a banger on every single page. Get it while it's hot. This thing is not going to be in the stores for long. And uh, before you know it, comes Hulk Grand Design uh, Madness, 
with uh, some very cool variant covers uh, by Ed McGinnis and Jeff Darrow to kind of goose those uh, bookshelves in your local comic shops. And the rest of the Jim Rugg bibliography in stores now, Plain Janes with Cecil Castellucci, and uh, rapidly going out of print soon. If you see it in your comic shops, get your hands on it right away, man, because we don't know when this is going to be back in print. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. Get these numbers up high on those Amazon charts. We love seeing it. We thank you so much. We appreciate your patronage. And now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. That's the other part that I think is going to be strange is like seeing like how, what is the actual time frame for this stuff? Right. And I wonder like things had longer shelf lives. Yeah. Because if you think of the Titanic, which was, I think, was it 99 that the Titanic was in theaters? It was number one movie for like 10 weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's run was several months. And so you go back like another decade time was sort of longer you know yeah. movies would be around for a while in the theaters careers for uh athletes past their prime dude ex-wrestlers trash compressors i think that's a jack davis uh andre the giant that's so good i think that's what that's supposed to be not gonna be the last jack davis and uh hulk hogan that we're gonna see this video that's the, that I, I like hearing that and look it's all of our guys man billy martin he was he was there at wrestlemania one <laughs> guest ring announcer something or other man little chuck norris love the grolics on that for, for our ex-baseball manager yeah dude and one of my favorite things in in mad whenever they would do parodies is when you would get like other cartoon characters in the mix man that's really great and, and would, uh George Bush Sr. is uh, a little cameo talking about other cartoon characters. <laughs> <laughs> and it would often be Angelo Torres, who's the guy who's doing, you know, modern day comic strips and blah, blah, blah. Man, it looks so nice. You know, I think in a past video, I, I commented on how I believe I picked up Crack Magazine before I started buying comic books. Yeah. You know, it's it's so interesting to see this stuff with how many comics at this point I've looked at and, and made and think about and it's like, these are the same ingredients, but again, they just, that lettering, it's, it's so, it's such a dramatic visual. <laughs> Howard the Duck, man, that's, that's the first, funny. first boobs I ever saw uh, on the TV screen. Duck boobs, to, to be sure. There it is, Jimmy. <laughs> this is what, this is what we come for. <laughs> the mega powers. Uh, I think maybe just a couple of months before there was even another WWF cover man so that makes sense pro I mean, wrestling I, is at the height of its absolutely game. because a couple months before you know like this is this is uh i don't know two-year storyline right that starts at wrestlemania 3 which was huge like that was such a big kind of uh turning point i think from a publicity standpoint right so i can see wrestling you know making a few appearances yes and of course the the feature that brings the wrestlers into this issue is uh, <laughs> recasting famous old movies with today's famous wrestlers you got Don uh, Bruno San Martino. So cool. Uh, <laughs> I like to think that uh, Bruno's Beefcake is like um, Fredo. He would be a good Fredo, I think. Yeah, I was going to say Hank Canals, but Fredo makes sense. <laughs> wow. The Untouchables. <laughs> good Morning Vietnam with Bobby Heenan on the mic. These wrestlers are... It's so crazy looking at these wrestlers. Like Honky Tonk Man gets, gets to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> no Way Out, man, with Slick... Gene Hackman, Ivan, and Nikita Koloff. Look at the drawing quality of, like, that Nikita Koloff. Oh, yeah. It's very, um, you know, like, that's a fine line, which means there's not a lot of wiggle room. And uh, really getting these likenesses, nailing them. Jesse Ventura. <laughs> Trading places <laughs> with Junkyard Dog, Hilarious. The Million Dollar Man, Vince McMahon. What a collection of characters. <laughs> But this is this is a great one that we could read on 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 the screen right here. Big, by which starring Georgie Animal Steel. I wish, I wish I was big. Pops in a thing, comes out Andre the Giant. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. Castle Blanco with with Hulk Hogan and Miss Elizabeth. Ooh, Randy's not gonna like that. With a guest appearance by Mr. Fuji. Oh man, Spy versus Spy. Yeah, dude, that guy was such a fucking badass, man. Is that an Aragoni side? margin doodle there you know it nice you know it so fun wow. 
I've never seen an episode of 30 something. Yeah, me Even either. to the point if you showed me like a, a picture, I, I wouldn't know that's what it was. But you remember the commercials and you knew that you weren't going to be watching that and you hoped that your parents weren't involved I don't even in remember kind of commercials. Really? I feel like it's just that name was such a perfect name for, I don't know, baby boomers or the generation after them or something. But it's just like I would hear that name everywhere. Right. What did I pull for this one, man? <laughs> little Morton Downey, man. I was I was a big fan of this. Like, who, who who would have his stop in a WWE ring as well? Yeah, he would, man. Smoking in front of uh, Roddy Piper. Man, Jack Davis. Just just watching Jack Davis art. I could do that all day. I remember watching this show late at night and being really frightened because it's like adults yelling at each other, and like you just you only see that occasionally in your life as a little kid if you're lucky. Yeah, and the amount of smoking that he would do. I feel like that was the end of cigarettes for, for everybody. He, like it was just—he got like lung cancer or something. Like he—he—he he, he got had a issue regarding cigarettes like later in life because he was so he stood on that hill, mm -hmm. you know, and was like, "Oh well, I'm gonna smoke," mm -hmm. and then you know, smacked him in the face. Look at that—a full page Jack Davis <laughs> splash page, and it's an action shot <laughs> right in the mouth. That's great. Right wow. in the bingo button. Explain that 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 uh, splash page for the podcast listeners out there, Jimmy. I don't even know where to begin. That's our, our Pope punching him in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so full of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not exactly like, uh, eye candy in the background, but all those little faces, like you see the big image first. It's great with the sound effect pow and the cartoon stars flying out of it and the detail cross hatching and heavy lines. And then there's a whole second layer of, of all the faces looking on. Just, uh, wow. Don't see very many of those kind of uh, splash pages in Mad Magazine. No. Great typography throughout, too. Yeah. <laughs> Roseanne. That's fascinating. Look at this right here. Yes. Will Eisner. Cocoon 2. That's ridiculous. That had just, just everything in that headline is ridiculous. <laughs> spy versus spy. <laughs> the, uh, in the first Cocoon, like, you know, Wilford Brimley, I think they said he was like in his 40s. Well, he's playing yes. a, like an old ass person. Yeah, he has the uh, the Arnie Anderson disease, but instead of looking like in his thirties, he looks like he's in the fifties. <laughs> there he is, the great Bill, Bill Gaines. Gaines. Shows up probably several times every issue. That makes sense. It's a really good Roseanne. It is. I saw a couple good John Goodmans in there too. I mean, more Drucker is just uncanny with his with his ability i've had that conversation with other cartoonists and that ability to not just do caricatures but have them actually moving through a comic i mean that's a superpower for an artist yeah and it's not and it's not static faces you know that's they're, what i'm they're saying moving, like, they're acting they're doing things you know it's always him yeah it's so good will eisner city people notebook so it's a collection uh from you know an existing book you know, Eisner made some deals, I guess, man. He made a deal. And this is about smells. And these do, it, it, there's a comedic bend to to these pieces, man. Uh, you know, there's a smellmanship. <laughs> there's a hot dog vendor here. There's a hot dog vendor there. He gets a whiff. This and is goes over funny. and buys the other guy's <laughs> uh, hot dogs. It's almost like better drawn Dave Berg. Because it's <laughs> that same kind of, you know, cheesiness. So they have to just be doing, like, it's just the titles they're adding, right? Yeah. That's, yeah, so, that's so. so weird. Another one, man. Guy's uh, walking down the street, catches a whiff from a shop that reminds him of uh, a time in Paris when he was uh, with his wife and, and had, like, a beautiful romance. So he goes off, buys some flowers, goes home. Spill it, George. What did you do wrong today? <laughs> <laughs> this is such a great time capsule piece because this would not have registered with me. It would have all been just the smell jokes. Right. Like Will Eisner, I had no idea whenever I'm, I'm 12. Uh, even, you know, early days of me reading comics just wouldn't have known what I'm looking at. And you look at it now and it's just like, wow, Will Eisner in Mad Magazine yeah, at this time. Yeah, no idea, man. They, like, this could be so many people's introduction to uh, to will eisner this one is weird because like it's three panels but it almost looks like a single image where it's this guy in three different places you know smelling people on the train <laughs> smelling shit getting kicked up from the road smelling exhaust and they're at home you smell something funny george no with fire coming from 
open door. Ha ha. Gaffa gaffa. You know what's funny too, as you flip through here, I get glimpses and it's like, it feels like Dan Klaus. Sure. Yeah, you know what's funny is uh, going through this, these magazines, putting them in order whenever I was uh, setting everything up uh, and going through the issues that I remember buying as a kid and remember thinking like, this isn't that funny. I think it's actually incredibly great and very um, sort of, there's a different level of humor that you could look at it, at that old stuff on. If you think about the fact that it really is very old guys commenting on the latest of pop culture, right. it has a different connotation than like when you're reading it as a kid. And I think it's actually very good. It's really, really good when you look at it through that context, because it's a bunch of very skilled old codgers trying to understand Pokemon and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> right. it's fantastic. Yeah. It's such a high level of craft being applied at that kind of social commentary. Yes. It feels like that should work in any era. Although to do it now is probably to get canceled constantly. Yeah. But it would still sort of, the same formula should still kind of apply with that, that out of touch older, older person doing it. Twins, Dear John, Working Girl. I didn't even know what Dear John. See, you never, you never stayed home from school, man, and watched daytime TV because that's a Judd Hirsch show. That uh, would always be on about 1, 2 p.m. Ah, uh, yes. Is that... That's not Basil Wolverton. What is that? We could go find out, man. Page 24. Let's go find out. A guy named Rick Tolka is yeah. the artist on that. But what we're going to focus, man... Oh, boy. New comic superheroes based on real people... <laughs> Angelo Torres on the art chops again. Love this idea of putting your real real people. And I feel like I've seen Alex Ross uh, images that are sort of like that, like a person standing in front of a painting. And of course, once again, I have to go back to Harvey Kurtzman doing these kind of fumettis. Yes. I mean, we're getting lettering treatments and everything, dude. <sighs> Defenders yeah. of hypocrisy, dude. It's the era of those guys, man. Jessica, Jessica, what's her name? Uh, the Jim Baker chick. Oh, Tam Tammy Faye? T Tammy Faye Baker, but like the chick that he cheated on her. Oh, Jessica, yeah. Jessica Hahn. Yes, yes. Jessica Hahn, the drudge, is uh, Roseanne. Dude, Bobcat <laughs> Goldthwait. Spastic man. Wow. And that's, dude, this is like fantastic lettering. It is. I I, I love this piece. This is ph phenomenal. I'm, I'm going to claim ignorance here. I don't know who P.W. Botha is. I don't know either. But he's a Victorian <laughs> mindset. It's almost Matt Wagner's uh, signature on, on his, his <laughs> checks. <laughs> self-destructo <laughs> it's incredible the isn't people like who the, are still around isn't that metamorphose uh the, the, yeah it looks the, like, like that's it, the yeah. original place Jeez. replace that bandage with a with a face tattoo yeah man mike tyson this is hilarious. Necroman. Okay, so so this is a dc com like dc owns mad at this point cuz this is all dc Kind of stuff, Logos but then I look at stuff. that. Yeah. Uh, the Smile is Mary Hart from Entertainment Tonight. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Kid Show host. Imagine old people trying to understand fucking Pee Wee with Gary Panter and Wayne White's Absolutely. contributions. Absolutely. I'm surprised we haven't seen a, a Pee Wee Herman <laughs> previous year, maybe. Call back to the Jake the Snake promo with the Million, million Dollar Man, Captain Avarice <laughs> with uh, Donald Trump. Wow. And Ed Koch. There would be guys, uh, I think it was, you know who it was? It was uh, Sasha Baron Cohen when he was doing Ali G and, you know, he went to, to Trump's office and and was pulling the ribs on him and stuff. When he was out in the, like, lobby, like, about to mm -hmm. talk to him. Do you hear this part? I think, yeah, I think I Ma heard this on, uh, Mark, on Maron? Mark Maron. Yeah, okay, right? yeah, yeah. That's a great interview. It's incredible. Learn all the different types of clowning and stuff. I love that. But he said that uh, Trump was on the phone, like, bitching out. Rudy Giuliani, like, just totally disrespectful, blah, blah, blah. Just screaming. Screaming, just screaming at on his phone calls. <laughs> the flesh. That's great. Bill Gaines and the Incredible Bulk. Yeah. Can't sleep on the share thing, though, because she's still fly. She, she's still showing off. It's still super fly. And man. also, when does she start? You know, like, she's got a decade and a half, two decades before this. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's so interesting. I mean, a lot of these people are... If not still around, at least still makes sense. Yes. 
Yeah, it's not P.W. Botha. And I mean, it's, this is 33 years ago. I love seeing all their all the typography and stuff. Like, what a fun magazine. It, 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 I never think about... Like, when I was a kid, I'd never think about that in a million years. Right. But you look through it now, and it's like... You're Deci trying to make something graphically interesting, and they do a really good job. Decisions are being made. And probably sure. quickly. See, there's that guy, man, from... Uh, he was the... Uh, on Breaking Bad, he was the like Narcotics Anonymous host guy who who like ran the show. He was on Dear John. Actually, you know, I'm a Judge Hirsch fan. Hmm. Oh boy, you're gonna get comments. Eh? Yeah. Be careful with your fold in. <laughs> yeah, I don't have no idea. <laughs> what the heck? Is that upside down? Yeah. Because they want they want you to right flip it on the on the <laughs> shelves, you know. Put it next to the damn heavy metal mags. Hilarious. Tis the season, Jimmy. Saw this one a couple times in the theater. Tis the season. Man, I uh, we saw it at the uh, drive-in, and we did not see it when we wanted to see it. We had to beg, plead, cut some grass. Like we, My folks didn't have the loot, and uh, we really had to guilt them into... Taking us to go see this thing. Never never saw flicks with my parents like all that much. Yeah. Very, very rarely, man. Yeah, I was going by myself at this point. And uh, it, it would be uh, parents going to the mall or something and drop, drop me off you to off the me. theater. But I had to see this. Yes. Uh, Murphy Brown is, I feel like that's a, uh, a moment in time. And the video rentals, um, gotta love that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should uh, check out that section. But we should definitely see what Mort's doing with his baddie man. Great, great logo, of course. Look at that, man. We got Ed Koch and Paul Kersey, <laughs> straight from Death Wish. Jeez. That feels like... Th that's surprising. I, I, I feel like putting that in here, right? <laughs> that's a shot for... Uh, that's Dork Knight Returns, man. Mm -hmm. It is. And they're they're commenting, he, he's here doing good now, but where was he five years ago when things started getting bad? Dude, this drawing is phenomenal. Look at all the different stuff they're doing. This is almost Spain Rodriguez, this, this, this coat. Yeah, it's true. But some of the line work in the background... It's a great joke or two that Jack Nicholson is, uh, that's just a good drawing. Put together with a, it's a photo stat. So, so it's not like pure blacks and you see like wash to it. One of the earliest more, uh, more Drucker comics that I have is a, uh, our army at war, Joe Kubert fucking Sergeant really? Rock comic. The guy could, has chops, man. He could draw a job or comic. Man, if you come, come across that, I'd be curious to see it. Holy crap. Look at that, man. It's got some blue language. Yeah, that's in, surprising, in too. In these little kid comics. 1989. Yeah, that's surprising for uh, a kid's book. You wonder if uh, if Drucker, if this is... If guys respond more to certain stories than others. Because it feels like he's putting a lot on these pages. <laughs> I feel like he's always going for it, It's man. true. Yeah, it's I've true. never seen a stinker from him. He's a pro. You gotta get... This is obligatory. Uh -huh, you course. gotta get that in there. Man, those Jack Nicholson jokers are phenomenal. And then they would always like lean on like like they they would get their little bits in. Like you remember mm -hmm. that chick with that weird mask and just like I wonder, and, you know, Arliss. Right. Arliss has to make his appearance. If if you uh, you know like if if you're Drucker and then you get Jack Nicholson in one of your stories, like you just go, you just it's <laughs> it's all in. Like some of these guys just lend themselves a little Dick Tracy appearance. <laughs> They just have to be like the caricaturist wet dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Almost like a comedian doing impressions or something, you know, like everybody's got their, their Jack Nicholson impression. There are probably quite a few uh, caricatures Yeah, you him. you would hear, like, I forget who they cite, but there there are, like, the celebrities who, are, who aren't that easy to do. Yeah, probably the, uh, I was going to say Brad Pitt, but I can imagine there's probably a pretty good one for him, but but the symmetrical, good-looking people, yeah. and the young, like young celebrities. You know, you know who it was? It, it is symmetrical. It, and uh, it's uh, Denzel, they said, because he has like perfect facial symmetry, yes. like nothing too outstanding. It's, it's where the good-looking people finally lose. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. Video reviews. Wow. Sam Viviano, I think he's a guy, guy who kind of took, uh, took over uh, more... Drucker's position, like after after a while. Man, I feel like these. I, th this is so much like I remember this time so vividly. Yeah, man. Yeah, sports cable network like that. Like when when like the idea of that was like weird. Like, right. how are you going to pad out your thing? And I swear to God, I was over at my parents' house like years ago, and it was 
on like one of the extended ESPNs. I'm telling you, it's no joke. There were dudes doing paper rock scissors. Like, <laughs> like I don't I don't know what the context was, but there were people. It was like a tournament of like paper rock scissors or something. I'm not joking. <laughs> did they have play by play? They did. It was it was pro- it had production and all of it, man. That's so funny. That would work for our channel, like we're kind of the hands channel. Like. <laughs> yeah. Do you know Candice Bergen's story? And and the reason I say that is because she hosted several episodes of like the first couple seasons of Saturday Night Live. And that was like, you know, that was considered a super hip show. And she's on there. And it's like, what was she doing then that made her so hip? Like, you know, it's like her and George Carlin. Yeah, I don't. I have no idea. Yeah. I, I don't know her story. <laughs> Kay Fabers, drop, some, drop something in the comments because that is something I've kind of always been curious about. It's like, damn, it's another Candace Bergen episode. Weird. Yeah. Oh, that's a good Robin Williams, man. Man, Mort, Mort making some money. Dude, Sam Kinison. Yes. These are all great. You know, like, Ron, Rodney Dangerfield's got to be one of those guys that if you're a caricaturist, like, yeah. The, those big-ass thyroid eyes. And, yep. <laughs> you know, a lot of these people own, like, the celebrities. Yeah. Stephen Wright, dude. That's, that's good there stuff. There is, man, Sounds of the 70s, stuck in the middle with you. Wow. Uh, they they own their caricatures and stuff. You Like, you'll see... Um, a walk through their kitchen or something like that and like a lot of a lot of people would buy the artwork off of a uh, drucker that makes sense hold up who's this one yakov smirnoff <laughs> <laughs> yeah surprised to see him in there where's carrot top a little early for that man that's that's not kind of this this covers selling yes. selling some issues yeah absolutely Ghostbusters is one of those gigantic from my childhood things. Oh, this is a piece I wanted to show off, dude. Mads Modern Rube Goldberg Inventions. So it is a call out to Rube Goldberg, the cartoonist, and it's set up like the old Sunday Funnies uh, Rube Goldberg specials. And they mention that, you know, Rube, Rube Goldberg was a, was a guy, you know, no, not Charles Schultz, you know, <laughs> Yahoo, Rube Goldberg, G O L D B E R G. It's Al Jaffe on the, on the stick doing the drawings for these things, man. So it's cool seeing him do a little bit of pen and ink work. Still with us, man. 100 plus years old. Amazing. This is, uh, that, like, what a weird concept. Like, imagine pitching that. Yeah. And and trying to get it done in a timely fashion. I say the same thing about fucking Rube Goldberg, period. Like, doing another one of these every week, every yeah, Sunday. that's unbelievable. But how much does it speak to the impact that those early cartoonists, newspaper cartoonists, had culturally? That yeah. it's like, here we are, I don't know, 40 years later or something, 50 years later, and it's like, yeah, we still know what, what Rube Goldberg means and is, and put it in mad. And, and, and the cool thing is, they're taking it back to the streets. Like, everybody knows the term Rube Goldberg, but who, a lot of people don't know that it's the the name of a cartoonist. Yeah, you mentioned it about that's the first time we all saw Eisner, that excerpt. It might be the first time we really saw Rube Goldberg and, in, in, uh, you know, what he was known for. <laughs> Mad visits a fat farm with Howard St- Howard Stoned. Wow. That's when he had that King Louie hair. Jeez. And before he got his nose shaved. It's going to be shameful. It's It's funny to see these different artists, too. Like, that Stern one felt real stripped down compared to some of these guys. Right. But clearly Stern, like, it works. But it is a variety. It's so nice to see Jack Davis pop up Always. a lot in these things, man. I was looking through some of the ones in the 80s, and uh, there was Will Oder, Harvey Kurtzman had, had, would do a feature every issue. Wow. For, for, like, a little run there. That would be really great to see. That'd be worth looking at, like some of uh, Kurtzman's late mad work. Yeah. This is a famous one. I've, I've seen this reprinted a million times. <laughs> That's such madness. <laughs> and, of course, I had to uh, flag this fold in because there's something familiar. I'm seeing something. You seeing it? No. See, it's cause, just because you're on an angle. That's here. right. Sitting off to the side for those at home. You, now you see it, right? Oh, yeah. That's sweet. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, once you know it's there, it's easy to see. Right. <laughs> it's almost like coming next issue. Exactly. Look at that, man. And the uh, the only turtle representation uh, 
And the issue is the back cover. <laughs> Lesser known Ninja Turtles. I like the, the Warhol, yeah. Yeah, yeah Warhol, Warhol the, the real name of the man. Gainsborough. The Dahlia Trio. <laughs> Norman Rockwell joint. This, these are great. Yeah, like Grano and Widow. It, who's the name of the person who painted oh, American man. Gothic? Is it like, it, I'm yeah. so ignorant. Gotta be something in wood. Yeah, we're the worst. This is where we get exposed as art frauds. Yeah, totally. That's really fun. It's good, right? He looks good as Alfred. <laughs> it's such a strange mashup. <laughs> Man, Hogan getting on there too. Wow. No Holds Barred, Wonder Years, Indiana Jones. That's a powerhouse top top line. Were you a Wonder Years guy? Yep, yep. Yeah. Kevin Amold. You remember that ep that episode? Where he uh he got he got his like uh name uh inscribed on on like a ring with his girlfriend and it and it spelled his last name wrong because he because he wrote it in pen incorrectly. Kevin Amold. Hilarious. Uh, oh, this was funny. Uh, CompuDoc self service medical terminal. It makes me think of like uh, the like co that telemedicine bullshit, where it's drop down menus, and you have some doc in a box, uh, you know, on a Zoom call saying, oh, yeah, yeah, "I'll prescribe is, you some some gimmicks." Totally, this is 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Danza, Doc Good and Plenty strikes out between meal hunger, like super. Cokehead. Oh yeah. I mean these look like pills on this coming yeah. out of there. <laughs> we got it. Susan right? Saran wrap. It's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. What do we got here, dude? What could be better than Hulk Hogan by Jack Davis? Yeah, and look at that Zeus. Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was still young enough, man, that I was a believer. I believe the kayfabe when Zeus shows up and like he's a part of that movie and he shows up and he's banging on his chest and he's in the pay-per-views and stuff. I was scared to death of that guy. <laughs> I thought he was legit. Not a bad Bobby Heenan. Not a bad Bobby Heenan. Uh, great George the Animal Steel. Who is this? That's what I, maybe it's a dude from the, in the movie. Oh yeah. could be. Maybe. Yeah. See, that, that's funny to, Put that in there next to like these uh, known known characters, and it's Jack Davis working in just pencil. That's pretty awesome, because look how tight that is. Yeah, you know, like so much of these drawings, it's just one tight line. That's kind of unbelievable. He's using straight edges on all the things that have straight edges, which is interesting because because I always think of him as just like a very kinetic cartoon. It's just moving. I'm moving, so moving. excited to see this as pencils. It's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all his outfits <laughs> from the movie is Stan Hansen in it there's 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 a there's a cowboy character in a in a in a bar who's get getting rowdy and in my mind it's Stan Hansen but it could be just like Blackjack Mulligan yeah. or somebody I, I'll be honest I barely remember this movie I saw this in the theater and that's the last time I saw this <laughs> <laughs> we uh we did not get the theater but we got we we're so excited we we had our in at the movie store and you remember there would be those like uh those like promo copies that they was that they would hook up the video store to review and they're not supposed to rent those out i have no memory of those oh no yeah like like uh if you if you're in with the video store right they get sent stuff from the company and it has a watermark on it like if you are watching this so you like call this number blah, blah, right. blah, like you know how many people ratted themselves out <laughs> right right uh but that's how we saw it. We saw it. I forget. There's a name for that. Somebody put in the comments what, what the name of those videotapes are called. But that's how screeners, we saw it. Screeners, right? Yeah, screeners. Screen, screener copy. I am in love with this, this pencil art. Like, he must have known, right? Because if normally he works in ink, this seems so clean and tight. It does make me wonder, like, what, what the reasoning was for it. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks incredible. Yeah, because, I mean, he's such an ink slinger. And he's known for being fast. So, like... Maybe it needed to be done so fast that it's like you got a day. Yeah, maybe. Because he's known for being the guy who could churn out an EC strip in a weekend. So maybe it's like this is a day's output for, for Jack Davis. Rest in peace, Tiny Lister, by the way. COVID casualty, I believe. I think I might have had a subscription to WWF Magazine at this time. 
Yeah, which is good era. why I go easy on the wizard subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> There's that guy, that movie critic dude. Do you yes. know his name? Harry something. Yeah, I don't know. So, right. Just always see him on Sunday night on TV. That. Might be confusing him with uh, that Alamo dude. Yeah, how cool was that, right? Yeah, that's a great that's a great piece. I can't imagine going through all of these. Because there's got to be gems like that just scattered everywhere. Yeah, I found a strip written by Chevy, Chevy Chase before he was famous uh, on, a, on a back cover. Yeah. Um, lots of stuff all over the place. And we need to do more more Mad Magazine content. We have everything. K-Favors, I, I put it out there to you guys, out to the universe. That's the thing for comments. Like, what, like, like how do we dispense of this information to you how do we show this stuff off uh what are the classic strips man are we going to be doing rose mia's boo-boo in uh in october for a halloween episode <laughs> we are now <laughs> unless i can talk you into doing it sooner <laughs> yeah there's, there could be all kinds of stuff interesting artists that show up for an issue or something like like you mentioned chevy chase i bet there's a lot of comic book artists who show up, you know, that are trying to just get work and end up in here early on or one-offs. Do we continue uh, just going through these things at a glance uh, year by year? Uh, let us know, man. Like, we ha we have all of this stuff at our disposal. I, we, we definitely are going to keep going issue by issue every every now and then we'll pull out we, we got to do issue number three i uh sooner than i'm down later. for any of the stuff that you can come up with yeah i don't think we did issue number two yet yeah that might be the one we're missing how about this for thinking of the turtles this is 1989 what would be the equivalent now of like hey man i'm self-publishing my new book where could it be in five years <laughs> right like i you know we don't even have an institution like mad magazine that you would be like you made it yeah like, right like you made it to the top of the pop culture food chain if you're on the cover of mad magazine yeah that's a good question man like like freaking dc comics they fully squandered uh an institution man by it's crazy when you think of what dc publishes yeah. and mad magazine's not something that that they find a way to value like above you know booster gold or somebody like the problem I don't like, know if they <laughs> <laughs> it, like you get the comic people into it like and it's like I'm not trying to uh, hate on the medium of comics by any means, but you need you need that outside energy. You needed the Dick D. Bartolos and these guys with a more kind of sophisticated like outlook. That's that's not part of the insular world of comics. Shouts to Ryan Flanders. I ain't talk about you, man. Like we're, we're homies. You know, you know what I bet is a huge problem for them was distribution. Because if it was a new, it was still newsstand distribution, like. That's just a nightmare, different world. Yeah, you know, so they're able to navigate that direct market and able to navigate bookstores, but newsstand distribution, like go look at a magazine rack. Yeah, um, you know, the stuff that can get through that system now is just, it's it's a totally different world. But I I would just think like, come on, this should be the apex of cartooning as we think of cartooning, and like you've got Mad. Yeah, put Mad on it and put 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 your best people on there. Get entice new talent like. I don't know, man. It seems like it should be a giant brand. Um, but what do I know? <laughs> they threw it in the pooper, man. Nevertheless, in 1989, that's pretty pretty good stuff for uh, Eastman and Laird. Maybe this is the thumbnail? Beautiful. Or uh, this is pretty iconic. Yeah, that's not bad either. Something like that? Yep, I dig it. That'll be the thumbnail for uh, today's video, man. With a big 1989, right, yes. right across the gimmick, man. Oh yeah, good to go, Jimmy. Yes. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. It's out there, man. Hulk Grand Design Monster Number One is in your local comic shop, unless they sold out of it already. Rush to your comic shop, pick that up, and tell them you want a copy of Hulk Grand Design Madness coming out at the end of April, retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk. And uh, join me on Patreon.com/slash Jim Rug. Red Room Trigger Warnings is out on the stands man issue one is out there and depending on when you're watching this video you're going to be able to get your hands on red room trigger warnings issue number two every issue completely self-contained murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game in red room comics and you can read these comics before they hit paper at my patreon patreon.com slash ed piscor three bucks for the archive there and you could uh read all that stuff before it comes out at the comic shop go to my link tree in the description below this video for uh for all of those destinations 
What, uh, what else do we have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. It's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel. Keep the lights on in the studio, man. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.